Hey everyone, welcome to this video for the computer engineering kit. We are going to be covering exercise 2 in this video which talks about Python loops. So feel free to pull out that instruction sheet to follow along. Now in the previous video, we talked about Python and its object-oriented aspects. We learned how to use an RD object to call methods that would make RD move. We also looked at a program that would draw a triangle. But do you remember what issue we were seeing with the code? If not, I actually have it up on the screen right now, and you could also look back at your instruction sheet for exercise 1. As you can see, lines 7 and 8 are being repeated three times in a row. This is very redundant. You might be thinking, what's the big deal? It's just three times. Typing it out isn't so bad. While this may be true in our case where our program is very small and errors are very easy to catch, you should start to think about what if this program were hundreds of lines long. An error with repetitive code could be very difficult to see and even make the code more messy. This leads me to our next exercise's topic, loops. We are going to be specifically looking at for loops, but there are others as well. A for loop is used to iterate over a block of code a certain number of times. If you look at the diagram on the screen, you can see that the starting arrow says, for each item in the sequence, check if it's the last item. This should be false the first few times around or else a loop wouldn't be necessary. So if it's false, it's going to go into the loop and run the code block or the statements and then go back to the top and then again check, is this the last item? Eventually this should be true. And when it is, it will exit the loop, continue running the program. Now let's see what we can do with them. The first thing to do is to identify what lines of code we want to run multiple times using our loop. Like we've already said, we want to repeat lines seven and eight, which work together to create one side and one angle of the triangle. Then we can start to think about the confines of the loop and what we want them to be. A triangle has three angles and three sides, so naturally we would want these lines to be repeated three times. A for loop is structured as follows. You want to start with the keyword for, and then a variable that will be incremented every time the loop runs. Let's call our variable i. Then you need to include the range that you will be incrementing i through, which would be 3 in our case. And don't forget about the colon. Python relies on indentation, so make sure to indent the lines of code you want to actually put inside of the loop. Now we have some cleaner and more error-resistant code. I'm also going to add in the pen up and pen down methods. We can run the code now. Now let's see if it draws the same triangle as it did before. It did. So now we know that the for loop didn't break anything, which is good. So this loop is going to loop three times. Each time both lines should run. After both lines are executed, the program will go back to the top of the loop and I will increment from one to two. And since this is still within the range of 3, both lines should run again, and then it should go back to the top of the loop and increment to 3. After the third loop, it will, I will have been incremented to 4, which is outside of the range, so we should exit the loop. Now we found a way to reduce redundancies, but what if we needed Artie to draw 4 triangles? That would require us to copy and paste the for loop 4 separate times. The next video, we'll talk about how to do this more efficiently.